Good evening, everybody. All right, we do have um, the children's initiation today during this Mass, and so we have two youngsters that will be baptized today after the homily. We have Bradley Allen Brown and Felicity Desta Barrera. So congratulations to those two. Right there? Okay. We're getting the water really, really cold, okay? <laughs> Want this baptism to take. All right. Um, first of all, we've got a few sports back. Um, Sporting Kansas City has played twice. They won one, and they lost their first one, and they won the second one, so congratulations to them. Hopefully they keep winning. I think baseball exhibition was starting today. Golf, I watched golf before I came to Mass, so that's going. Um, not so sure about football or hockey yet. All right. Um, I know we've got some new folks first time back at Mass, so remember when you're in your pews, you don't have to wear your mask, but whenever you stand up to go anywhere, you must have your mask on. So when you come to communion, you must have your mask on. You'll receive and then take a couple steps away and then you'll raise your mask and consume the, the Eucharist. Mask back on, return to your pew. You will also have your hands sanitized um, before you receive communion. Um, make sure you get it all rubbed in because you don't want the host absorbing all that hand sanitizer. You know, so sprayers, make sure you don't spray too much. 
because I've had a couple people come up there and they had puddles in their hand. <laughs> um, so we, we don't want that. All right. Um, singing. Only the choir can sing. Nobody else can sing. Um, wherever you're seated, make sure you're at least eight feet away from anybody else. If you're closer than eight feet, then you might need to adjust a little bit. I think everybody, now you can stay within eight feet of your family. I think everybody looks pretty good right now, okay? All right, any birthdays? Right here, when's your birthday? Today, happy birthday. And it's Felicity's birthday? When? Wednesday, how old? Six, congratulations, happy birthday. It's a big week for you, young lady. <laughs> Any anniversaries? Okay. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace and peace of God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, in our gospel today, Jesus proposes many parables to describe the kingdom of God as we prepare to greet the Lord in the scriptures and in the Eucharist. Let us pause to ask for forgiveness for the times we have failed to build up the kingdom of God in our own words or in, or in our actions. Lord Jesus, you speak in parables to announce the mysteries of your kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the son of man sowing good seed into our world. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you call us to fullness of life. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. Show favor, O Lord, to your servants and mercifully increase the gifts of your grace that made fervent in hope, faith, and charity. They may be ever watchful in keeping your commands. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. There is no God besides you who have the care of all that you need to show you have not unjustly condemned. For your might is the source of justice. Your mastery over all things makes you lenient to all. For you show your might when the perfection of your power is disbelieved. And in those who know you, you rebuke temerity. But though you are master of might, you judge with clemency, and with much lenience you govern us, for power, whenever you will, attends you. And you taught your people by these deeds that those who are just must be kind, and you gave your children good ground for hope that you would permit repentance for their sins. The word of the Lord. in supplication. All and the nations you have made shall come. They will bow down before you, Lord, and glorify your name. For you are great and do marvelous deeds. Slow to end. 
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, the Spirit comes to the aid of our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought. But the Spirit himself intercedes with inexpressible groanings. And the one who searches hearts knows what is the intention of this Spirit because he intercedes for the holy ones according to God's will. The word of the Lord. Blessed are you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth. You have revealed to little ones the mysteries of the kingdom. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus proposed another parable to the crowd, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be likened to a man who sowed good seed in his field. While everyone asleep was asleep, his enemy came and sowed weeds all through the wheat and then went off. When the crop grew and bore fruit, the weeds appeared as well. The slaves of the householder came to him and said, Master, did you not sow good seed into your field? Where have the weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. His slaves said to him, Do you want us to go and pull them up? He replied, No. If you pull up the weeds, you might uproot the wheat along with them. Let them grow together until harvest. Then at harvest time I will say to the harvesters, First collect the weeds, and tie them in bundles for burning, but gather the wheat into my barn. He proposed another parable to them. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that a person took and sowed in a field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, yet when full grown, it is the largest of plants. It becomes a large bush, and the birds of the sky come and dwell in its branches. He spoke to them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed with three measures of wheat flour until the whole batch was leavened. All these things Jesus spoke to the crowds in parables. He spoke to them only in parables to fulfill what had been said through the prophet. I will open my mouth in parables. I will announce what has lain hidden from the foundation of the world. Then dismissing the crowds, he went into the house. His disciples approached him and said, Explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. He said in reply, He who sows good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. The good seed, the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one, and the enemy who sows them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the harvesters are angels. Just as weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so it will be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels and they will collect out of his kingdom all who cause others to sin and all evildoers. They will throw them into the fiery furnace where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. Whoever has ears ought to hear. The Gospel of the Lord.
So it wasn't all that long ago when we started the stay-at-home order across this country, well, across a lot of parts of the world. And it started during Lent. And, you know, during Lent is a time where we should be, you know, looking at our lives and making changes and continuing our conversion. And um, so there are some things that we started when we had to start staying at home. I remember seeing um, in Italy, I felt sorry for the Italians because some of them just had apartments with like a small little balcony and one was still practicing for the marathon. So he ran back and forth across his balcony for 26 miles. And his balcony was like from maybe here to my chair, if that long. You know, that is persistence. Continuing to train, making the best out of a bad situation. Well, my oldest sister decided that she was going to make some changes in her life. And so she decided she was going to start um, walking every day. And then she started changing her diet a little bit. And today I got a note from her, well, to the group me text family text, that she's now lost 47 pounds. Now that takes persistence, it takes patience, and it takes determination to do something like that. But she had decided that she wanted to make some changes. So she started with changing how she eats and what she eats. And when she decided to make that change, it set into motion something that just began to happen. And that's kind of like the kingdom of God. When we decide that we need to make some changes in our life and we're determined and we make those changes and when we decide that we are going to be more kind as we hear from the book of the wisdom then we start doing things and not just like a fad but we start making permanent changes in our life and when we do that we stick to it and we pay attention to are we being kind in every situation that we're at or do we need to be more kind in areas where we might be a little judgmental but when we continue to start to do that each and every day then we are making big changes in our life with the help of the spirit and life starts to come a little bit easier and that is that seed that is sown in all of our hearts, the seed that was sown in our own baptisms, and we're gonna have a couple baptisms here in a minute, uh, but that seed starts to produce good fruit. And the good fruits are what we see that comes out of this. The kingdom of God is within each and every one of us. The kingdom of God is not a place it's an idea. It's the spirit living within us. It's us being like Christ. It's us doing good and promoting good in this world. And when we are out doing that, it makes change. But if we are constantly complaining and judging, we are not spreading the kingdom of God. We're being a little bit less like that yeast we're being more a little bit like those weeds we need to be wheat you know the yeast that that woman in those measures of flour three measures of flour is quite a lot of flour could feed up to 200 people but just a little bit of yeast a little bit of God a little bit of kindness can go a very long way. So we have to be persistent in wanting to make changes in our areas that we need to make changes. We have to be determined to continue to follow through each and every day and not expect perfection because we will fail if we expect perfection. 
because we are human, but to trust that we will be spreading this kingdom of God with our mercy, with our love, with our kindness, and with our compassion. So think about that this week. When am I not being very kind? When am I not shining that light of Christ in my daily life? And ask God to help us to just start making some small changes that can grow. All right, are we ready to baptize? Let's uh, have the parents and the godparents come to the font. I'll get the ice out of the water. <laughs> oh, Biagio is going to call your names first. There were nine children that were preparing to celebrate sacraments at the Easter Vigil, but all of that had to be postponed, so we're trying to catch up. And today, two of those are going to be baptized, and one of them is going to receive their first communion. So I'd like to call them up, and they go to the baptismal font with their sponsors. Um, first one is Felicity Desta Barrera, and her brother, Bradley Allen Brown. So if they would go together to the font. My dear friends, Bradley and Felicity, with the approval of their parents, have asked to be baptized. So let us call upon the Father to number them among his adopted children in Christ. We ask you, Father, with your Son, to send the Holy Spirit upon the waters of this font. May all who are buried with Christ in the death of baptism rise also with him to newness of life. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Bradley and Felicity, you have completed a long preparation and are ready for baptism. You will receive a new life from God who is love. You will become Christians. From now on, we will need to help them even more. This is especially of true their parents, true of you, their parents, who have given them permission to be baptized and who have the primary responsibility for their upbringing. But all of us who have in any way prepared them to meet Christ today must always be ready to assist them. And so before these children make their profession of faith in our presence, let us in their presence publicly and with a deep sense of responsibility renew our own profession of faith, which is the faith of the church. So I ask you all, do you reject sin so as to live in the freedom of God's children? I do. I do. do you reject the glamour of evil and refuse to be mastered by sin? I do. Do you reject Satan, father of sin and prince of darkness? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, was crucified, died, and was buried, rose from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. This is our faith. This is the faith of our church. We are proud to profess it. Okay, who wants to go first? Felicity, the birthday girl? Okay.
Um, grab my towel right back there. Felicity, okay, lay back down. I want to pour water on your head. I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Okay. Baptized in Jesus Christ, you are a new creation. Bradley, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Baptized in Jesus Christ, you are a new creation. Bradley and Felicity, you have become a new creation and have clothed yourself in Christ. Receive this baptismal garment. And bring it unstained to the judgment seat of our Lord Jesus Christ so that you may have everlasting life. That's fine, just lay it on him. However you want. God, parents, please come forward to give the newly baptized the light of Christ. Okay, you're lit. Here, you might light him. There you go. Okay. All right. You have been enlightened by Christ. Walk always as children of the light. And keep the flame of faith alive in your hearts. When the Lord comes, may you go out to meet him with all the saints in the heavenly kingdom. The God of power and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ has freed you from sin and brought you to new life through water and the Holy Spirit. He now anoints you with the chrism of salvation so that united with his people you may remain forever a member of Christ who is priest, prophet, and king. Okay, congratulations. And let us stand. Trusting in the action of the Holy Spirit to intercede for us, let us bring our prayers before our Lord. For the church, that like the master of the field in the parable, the church may defer judgment and await with patience the time of God's harvest, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who work in the judicial branch of the government, in wisdom and mercy may they work for justice while protecting the dignity of all, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those struggling with racial injustice in our society and for those working to resolve it, we pray to the Lord. For those fleeing from violence, war, and poverty, may they find shelter, support, and safety. We pray to the Lord. <laughs> For all gathered here, may we be like the hidden presence of the yeast in the kingdom of God in our homes, workplaces, and community. We pray to the Lord. <laughs> For those who have died, especially Joe Cook, may they be gathered into the harvest of eternal life. We pray to the Lord. God of creation, in you we place our hope and trust. Hear our prayers that in listening to your word and feasting at your table, we might be strengthened to do your will now and always. And we ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the offerings which we bring from the abundance of your gifts, that through the powerful working of your grace, these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life and lead us to eternal gladness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you so love the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love on us what you loved in your Son by whose obedience we had been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exultation we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Oh, 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you humbly. We pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, James, our Bishop, the clergy, and all your children. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At our Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer to each other a sign of Christ's peace. <laughs> if um, the parents of Bradley want to bring them forward in front of the altar, with mass, Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word of my soul shall be healed.
satisfied in Christ's presence the loaves will abide bread of life from heaven your blood and body given we eat this bread and drink this cup until Not the food that will pass away. Set your hearts on the food that endures. Come learn the true and the living way that the fullness of life may be yours. Bread of life from heaven, your blood and body.
Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We go in peace to love and serve our Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.